All right, Kyla, thank you so much uh, for joining us today in this video call. Um, we are really honored and privileged having you, hearing your story. Um, so we're really excited uh, about this call. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Um, we've heard about what happened in your life. Uh, it, it was a tragic event on the 25th of 2018, uh, where your husband died of suicide. Um, the news spread all around the world. It's been uh, a few years from now. Um, and I'm wondering, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, me and my three boys, um, they are eight, seven, and five years old now. And so we're doing great. We're rebuilding our life. My mantra here on the other side of loss is rebuilding beautiful. So I really truly believe that we are every single day rebuilding a whole new different kind of beautiful um, and hopefully even more beautiful than before. So we're doing great. That's awesome. Great to hear. Um, you say we are rebuilding. Is that really the thing that you've experienced after what happened? How did you cope with the whole thing? I'm, I'm wondering, did you see it coming or was it a, uh, just like a big punch? What, what, what was it like at the moment? Yeah, you know, the suicide, Andrew had struggled with his mental health. It was a very quick struggle. Um, he had onset of panic attacks in the fall of 2017. And we, um, about six months later, got a depression diagnosis. And so we had this season, it was really a summer where he battled with depression and we were doing everything we knew to do to get him better. And we actually thought he was getting better. And so at the end of July in 2018, um, the doctors released him to go back to work and he went back to work and hit the ground running and gave two powerful messages, two back-to-back -back weekends. He talked about mental health. And he talked about his struggle with depression and anxiety and it was powerful. I mean, church was packed and it was really powerful. His vulnerability and transparency um, was so appreciated. And at the time, not a lot of pastors were talking about mental health. So mm -hmm. it was really meaningful. Um, and then headed into the third weekend, he just had a really awful day in the office. So his broken mind just wasn't able to process some information he received that day like he normally would. While we were away for just a tiny bit, um, he attempted suicide. And so he was rushed to the hospital and God gave us the gift of one last day. Then on, yeah, August 25th, 2018, he took his last breath. Wow. Behind you is a sign that says, God's got this. Um, I think it's, um, uh, very bold quote, even in a situation like that. This, how, how did you experience God in this season? Yeah, so God's got this has really been the glue that has held our family together through a lot of different trials. Um, Andrew's dad, Dave, who was the lead pastor of our church, he had started the church when Andrew was three years old. He had led the church for over 20 years. Um, in 2011, he was diagnosed with leukemia. And we were in the hospital and he sat each of his kids down, his three kids, sat them each down one by one and said, I have leukemia, there's a kind you want and a kind you don't want. I have the kind you don't want, but God's got this. That phrase, God's got this, I mean, for us, it just means that no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, um, no matter what trials or what suffering or what loss, no matter what we go through, God is sovereign. God's in control. God's got this. We can trust him. We can lean into him even when we do not understand. Like I, I, I do not understand why this happened, but I, I see the good that you've and that's come out of it because so much good has come out of it. Like the stories that have come out of Andrew's loss have been, have blown me away. They've been so powerful. I mean, right away, I was able to see that God was going to use this story for good and he was going to squeeze as much purpose as he could out of it. And he has people who have said, your public grief has saved my life or Andrew's death has saved my life or the way that you've talked about suicide has helped me open up and talk about my own suicide suicidal ideation and I've gotten the help I need. God has been at work um, the whole time. So listening to you, it's kind of like you say, he's kind of the seed in the soil when he died that actually produced a lot of fruit and, and he became the salvation of many, many other people. It's an amazing, it's an amazing testimony. 
And I think it's a comfort for you, knowing all these lives that are changed uh, and touched, even through his message, even today, even in this place. What I was wondering, did you have a moment that he talked to you about these feelings, about these thoughts about suicide? Um, and, and can you take us to that moment? What did you think at the moment? Yeah, there was one moment over that summer during his struggle with depression where we're sitting at the kitchen counter, I'm venting to Andrew and he was venting to me as well and talking about his own struggle and we we're kind of just venting back and forth and his response to me, he was telling me that he was up in the middle of the night the night before and he had his staff organization charts spread all over the counter and he was feeling super overwhelmed and he thought about killing himself. And I'll never forget my reaction to his admission in that moment. I, I totally reacted out of my own emotion and I said, Andrew, that is so selfish. You would never do that. I can't believe you even said that. You would never do that to me and the boys. Here I am telling you I'm exhausted and you're telling me you're just gonna leave me. Like I said all the things you're not supposed to say. And so since his death, you know, I've learned that there is a better way and there's, there's a way to respond from a heart of love instead of reacting out of our own emotion. And so we can take a couple steps back. We can lean in. We can talk less. We can ask questions, questions like, do you have a suicide plan? What problem are you trying to solve through suicide? Do you know when or how you would do it? How often do you think about it? Um, questions are so powerful. I mean, they can really change the game and they can lead to solutions maybe they had never thought about before. You know, I, I'm wondering um, when you said to Andrew, no, you won't ever do that to me. Uh, what was his response? Because I would say like, no, no, for sure I wouldn't do it. I, I think there's a lot of people out there that have promised their loved ones um, to never um, do something like that. Yet the struggle was so hard that they end up doing it. Um, and then their loved ones are left um, and they kind of feel like, hey, you promised. Yeah, um, like I said, his response to me was, Kayla, you need to come up with something better to say. That's not what you say to someone who's struggling with suicidal thoughts. And I think it was really real for him. I think him mm -hmm. saying that out loud, that was the first time he had said that out loud. And I think he was looking for empathy and compassion and for me to crawl into that dark space with him and just sit with him and hold him and yeah. shut up and stop talking and just sit with him and hold him. and. I didn't see it that way. I had no idea. And so he didn't give me any empty promises. He didn't say, no, I would never do that. I know that would never happen. I think he was really scared of, of those thoughts. I think it was really um, a scary time for him. And that's why I titled, I wrote a book about our story and I titled the book Fear Gone Wild. And that's what it really felt like. It felt like there was this fear that had crept in through these panic attacks and had just spread like wildfire and so he was really afraid and I don't think I fully understood how afraid he was or how much pain he was in until it was too late. I think you know somebody made the um, suggestion one day it's like uh, standing in a, f a building on fire and it's either you stay inside the building and you burn or you jump out uh, as an escape um, and I think the, the the mental kind of pain that people carry uh, is something that's well not really visible for the eye but it's maybe even harder than literal pain in your body um, thinking about this pandemic season people dying of covid and that's what we see you know on on the news and everywhere um, but um, i think the real damage uh, the mental damage that's hard to see for the, for the eye um, is big on the agenda today um, and i would really want to ask you what is your um, main message to the church? Yeah, I would say, you know, I'm always trying to bridge the gap between mental health and ministry. And I think the way that we do bridge that gap is remembering that mental illness is not a choice. Mental illness is not a sin issue. Mental illness doesn't disqualify anybody from ministry. It's a real physical illness. It's a real chemical imbalance happening in the brain. I think stopping and taking a couple steps back and remembering, I have no idea. I have no idea what it's like to walk in their shoes. I have no idea what it's like to live with the pain that they're living with. I have no idea what it's like to suffer with the depression that they're 
suffering with. And that can help us have a heart of empathy and compassion for their pain to remember, I have no idea. I have no idea. I can't assume. I don't know. And so that will help us just be able to sit right beside them and love them and hold them and be present with them and be patient with them on the journey. I think there's many people watching this right now or even in, uh, in the audience um, that have gone through similar situations and some people really struggle to pick up their lives again and start living again and start loving again and start going you know with, with the beautiful things of life. Um, is there something that you could say especially to those people? Yeah, I would just say that living with the pain is possible. Um, the pain can be so overwhelming. You know, when Andrew died by suicide and I was left in the ruins and I'm looking around me and everything, my whole life looks like it's destroyed. It can be so overwhelming and it can, it can make us want to just curl up in a ball and call it quits ourselves. Um, it took me to the edge of myself and I struggled with my own suicidal thoughts after Andrew passed away thinking how in the world can I live with this pain for another day? Like I don't think I can live with this pain for another day. And what I've learned the last three years is that living with the pain is possible. It's possible to have our pain and our sorrow in one hand and to have a beautiful life and to have joy and to have beauty and to have hope in the other hand. And moving forward is having them is having both. Um, the truth like you know resides in both. And so for me, that's what it's been. It's been honoring my pain and honoring Andrew's story and honoring Andrew's life, but also honoring the one life I've been given. And if you're still alive, then God's not done with you yet. Your life's not over. You're still here. You still have breath in your lungs. You still have purpose. And it's also reaching out to therapists. You know, I've seen a therapist every single week um, for the first two years I saw a therapist every single week for an hour and had that safe space where I could be totally honest and totally vulnerable and tell her exactly how I was feeling and and those scary thoughts that I was having and it was a safe place to process all of that and so I think being honest and being vulnerable um, is the key to being able to move forward and to being able to rebuild that kind of beautiful life. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us. Um, I know it's really going to, to have a great impact in our nation. Uh, and we really pray uh, that your story and the seed of, uh, of, of, of the life of your husband uh, will lead to many, many, many salvations, uh, literally around the world. So thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you.